Thank you, Michelle. Um, now I'd like to ask Christina Kimenek to come up and uh, make her statement. Christina lost uh, her sister, Mari Ray so Soper. Mary Ray Soper on Flight 77. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to speak here today. <clears throat> Five years ago, our country and families of the 9-11 victims watched in horror as the most horrific tragedy on American soil in decades unfolded. Five years later, survivors of the attacks find it difficult to rejoin their lives. Many members of the families of the <clears throat> victims have rejoined their lives. The witnesses of this event are still disturbed, but we go on with our lives. We have busied ourselves with important work, raising families, socializing, getting back into the dizzying details of our days, days blending into another. Still, in a rare silent moment of the day, or when lying in bed at night, pushing our mental to-do list away, we cannot forget. We cannot forget our loved ones and the way they perished. We cannot forget the moments leading up to their death, nor completely forget the most heart and gut-wrenching days and months to follow. We cannot forget the images of war and the stories and photos of those who have died, civilians and soldiers. We cannot forget the lack of interest of our government in seeking a public investigation in the areas that led to this national tragedy. We cannot forget the families that fought so hard to be heard and triumphed with historic legislation to form the 9-11 Commission. Finally, finally questions would be answered, not just those that belong to the families. Americans would hear testimony and have their questions answered. Why, really why were we attacked in a, is a question answered much too quickly and simply. The chronology of events, intelligence and communication would be revealed and answered many of our questions. People would be held accountable. Osama bin Laden, Al-Qaeda, but whom else may we discover should also be held accountable for the inadequate systems and broached processes and communication that went wrong in that day in particular? This was important. It was about our security. The investigation revealed these broken systems and procedures. Many recommendations were made. Some impl implemented. Most were not. Airline security still remains insecure and little improved. We still do not have screening for cargo under passengers' feet. We still do not screen for plastic explosives, a type of threat we have known to be used by terrorists for decades. The TSA has purchased 147 puffer screeners to install across the country. 147. Weapons have gone undetected, and we still do not have screening for many of the explosives and threats that we could have now. The investigation also revealed to many confusion, contradiction, and outright lies evidenced by testimony and the PDB of August 2001. One by one during the investigation, the emergence of lies, excuses, and contradictions came forth in the investigation and in administration press conferences. The administration had no prior knowledge of threats against the U.S. on U.S. soil. We know from presidential briefings and other published statements that this is not true. This administration, nor the one before it, could not have thought of or studied the idea of terrorists using planes as weapons. We know from published statements and studies that this is not true. The statement, if you're, if you're not with us, you are against us. And yet we've called those who harbor these terrorists our friends on the war on terror. Then 9-11 became synonymous with Iraq and Saddam, Saddam Hussein. Though the CIA was blamed for misleading information and the administration blamed uh, for, for then misleading Congress, the fact remains that there was never WMDs and there had been public statements from the administra administration prior to the war that there was a lack of evidence and before that statements that there was no threat whatsoever from Iraq. The CIA also informed the administration that U.S. preemption in Iraq would be the cause for more terrorists to be trained and harbored abroad. That briefing we ignored. And now, with contradictions and falsehoods coming to light, the reasons the public was given for going to war fall away one by one. 
Here we are five years later. Some improvements have been made domestically, but not nearly enough. And yet we still are left with unanswered questions, unaccountability, and facts that come to light that beg new questions or reaffirm unresolved issues during the 9-11 investigation. There needs to be a new investigation. Why should we be concerned? How does this affect each of us as long as we continue to work, spend time with our families when we can and take a vacation once in a while? Well, over 3,000 people died on 9-11 and we have not investigated nor answered all of the issues surrounding the events of the day nor have national security recommendations been fully implemented. Most families are losing loved ones. U.S. soldiers are asked to go to war and are coming home maimed, and more keep losing their lives, making the ultimate sacrifice. Hundreds of thousands of Iraqi civilians have been sacrificed. In the U.S., the gap between the rich and poor is widening. Money is being diverted or cut by Homeland Security to cities for first responders. First responders, money is being cut in education, health care is being ignored, our children have less and less opportunities, our constitutional rights have been threatened, everything, everything that makes us a democracy and a strong country cannot be thrown out. We are not the strongest country in the world right now. I personally really hope for one year where September 11th I can remember those who perished and my sister in peace. And not surrounded by all the unanswered questions and the, pol and the political lies and, and drama. I'd like to finally focus on my sister. Thank you. Thank you, Christina.